Welcome to video number 25, Slicer Introduction. In this video, we are going to go online to get our first print project file, and then we're going to load that into Slicer so that we can prepare it for our first print. Now we're going to start off by going to thingiverse.com in order to retrieve our calibration cube, which is going to be our very first print. Thingiverse is a great website you can go to to find a lot of open source projects and a lot of .stl files that you can use to print your own projects. And this is where we are going to find the calibration cube that we need. And there's going to be a lot of different calibration projects to choose from, but I'm going to choose this one, this 25 millimeter cube, in particular for our first print. Now once we click to download this thing, we need to download this .stl file down here at the bottom. It's going to be a very small file and it'll download very quickly, but this is the file that we're going to load into Slicer. But before we can do that, we need to get Slicer set up and we're going to be walked through a configuration right when we open it for the first time. Now we can go ahead and set some of our defaults walking through this configuration wizard. And we are going to be the Marlin Sprinter. A lot of this stuff we can keep the same. Nozzle diameter, it depends on what your hot end was. I know mine was a .35. And yours should be somewhere in that range. And it'll let us set our default extrusion temperatures and things like this. Now. Most of this stuff we can we can and will go back in and change manually, so this part's not incredibly important. But the first thing I'm gonna do is switch to expert mode. It, it starts off in simple mode, but we need all of the settings in expert mode. So that's the first change that we're gonna make, and that requires us to close out and then go back into Slicer after we make that change. Okay, so now we've got Slicer back up and running, and now we're in expert mode, which gives us a lot more options and a lot more stuff we can use here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change the layer height to 0.4 instead of 0.3 for a lower resolution, but that will give us a better chance at a good first print. Also, I'm gonna change from honeycomb to regular line fill pattern. It's not as complicated, doesn't require as much movement. And this is very important here. What you're going to see me do with all these speed perimeters is drastically cut the speeds down from what they're currently at down to 15 millimeters pretty much all the way across the board. And go ahead and make all the same changes that I'm making. The reason I do this is because the defaults are way too fast for what your printer is probably going to be capable of for the first print. And my rule is usually to get it going very slow at first and once you know you have a good print and you can print good at a low speed, then you can gradually increase the speed as you see fit. But right now we want to get a good quality print and we're not exactly looking for speed right off the bat. And I'm going to go and save this setting, this preset, makes it a lot easier this way. You know, every time you get a new filament, you're going to have to tweak these settings because filaments react very differently. And so it's good to have presets saved for each filament. Now this is where you can save your first layer and second layer temperatures for your hot end. And the reason you'd want your first layer about 8 degrees hotter is so that it will connect with the heat bed and you'll get a good first layer and then you can usually cool it down 8 to 10 degrees for every layer after that and that usually makes for a good print. But usually people keep their first layer a little bit hotter. So that's why you see mine at 8 degrees warmer. So after making those first changes, it's time to go ahead and load our STL file that we just downloaded from Thingiverse. 
So we can tell from looking at it in 3D view that everything loaded okay. And that's exactly how we want it. And from here we can scale it down. And it does show me doing that. Uh, scaled it down to 75% for a faster print. But I did go back and change that back to 100. So you don't have to scale it down. Uh, but that is one option you can do in slicers. You can take something and scale it up or down depending on what you need. And then after that I export the G-code to a location where I can get to that file again. Because that G-code is what we want. That is what we load into Pronterface that tells it all the instructions it needs to know to print. 